This is Chapter 3 of The Yellow Room by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. <clears throat> she was still shivering as she got her bag from the entrance hall. She did not put on her hat. She left the front door open to let in more air and stood outside looking about her. There was no sign that George Smith had done much. Branches from the great pines littered the turnaround of the drive, and where the hill rose abruptly behind it, the tool house appeared to be closed and locked. But the day was brilliantly bright. A bed of peonies by the grass terrace at the side of the house was beginning to show radiant pink and white blossoms and a robin was sitting back on its tail and pulling vigorously at a worm. It was familiar and friendly, and she started briskly down the hill. This was a mistake. She had not changed her shoes, and walking was not easy. The gravel had been raked into the center of the drive to avoid washing away in the winter rains and thaws, and the hard base underneath was rough. It was no use going to the garage, she knew. The cars had been put up for the winter. At the entrance gates, however, she hesitated. She could, she knew, telephone from the Richardson cottage, but she did not yet feel able to cope with the colonel and with his talk of dawn. In the ward place, separated from Crestview by a narrow dirt lane, was as far up the hill as Crestview itself. In the end, she decided to walk the mile to the market. It was easier going on the streets, and besides, she had always liked the town. Its white houses, neat and orderly, its strong sense of self-respect, its New England dignity, all appealed to her. It looked friendly, too, in the morning sun, and her anxiety seemed foolish and slightly ridiculous. It was still early. Here and there, it being Monday, washing was already hanging out in the yards, but she saw no one she knew until she limped into the market. Fortunately, it was open, and behind the counter, Harry Miller was putting on a fresh white coat. He looked rather odd when he saw her. How are you, Miss Carroll? he said as they shook hands. I heard you were coming. Early, aren't you, this morning? She smiled as she put up a, a, pulled up a stool and sat down. I had to walk, she explained. No car, no telephone, no groceries, and no sense. I forgot to, I forgot to change my shoes. Sounds like a lot of misery, said Harry, eyeing her. It, it, it was. It is. Harry, do you know anything about Lucy Norton? She's not there, and even George Smith isn't around. I don't understand it. Harry hesitated. Well, he said, I guess you've run into a bit of hard luck, Miss Carroll. Take George now. He's in the hospital. Had his appendix out last Thursday. Doing all right though, kind of proud of kind of proud of it by this time. I'm sorry. He he wasn't much good, but he was somebody. I'll go to see him as soon as I get things fixed a bit. What about Lucy? Harry still hesitated. He had always liked Carol. She was she was just folks like the rest, not like some he could mention. And that morning she was looking young and wind blown and rather plaintive. About your telephone, he said evasively. I guess your mother didn't pay any attention to the notice. You had to pay all winter even to keep one. And then, and then you were lucky if you did. 
I suppose mother's got one, Carol said. We didn't expect to, to come, of course. What about Lucy Norton? Is she sick too? Well, I suppose I'd better tell you, he said. Not too comfortably. Lucy's had an accident. She fell down the big staircase at your place and broke her leg. In the middle of the night, too. She might be lying there still if that William, who takes down the winter stuff, hadn't come along. Seems like he wanted to borrow some coffee and the kitchen wing, and the kitchen wing was locked. He went around to the front door and found it open and found Lucy there. She's at the hospital too. Doing all right, I hear. Carol looked startled. What on earth was Lucy doing on the stairs in the middle of the night? She always sleeps in the, serv in the service wing. He grinned. Well, that's a funny thing, Miss Carol. She says somebody was chasing her. Carol stared at him, chasing her, chasing her. It doesn't sound like Lucy. Does sound foolish, doesn't it? He said. She's a sensible woman too, like you say, but that's what she claims. I only know what they're saying around here. Seems like she says it was, it was cold that night and she got up to get a blanket from from some closet or other. The light company hadn't got around to turning on the electric current, so she took a candle. She got to the closet all right, but just as she was ready to open the door, she says somebody reached out and knocked the candle out of her hand, knocked her down too, and practically ran over her. It, it sounds fantastic. Doesn't it? They're calling it Lucy's ghost around here. Anyhow, she was so scared that she picked herself up and made for the stairs. It was black dark, you see, so she fell right down them. It's a mercy she was found at all. Old William saw the front door wide open and went in, and Lucy Norton was at the foot of the stairs, about crazy with one thing at and another. He got Dr. Harrison there, and they took her to the hospital. She's in a plaster cast now, he added, almost with gusto. Carol stared at him. It wasn't a ghost if it opened the front door, she said. If the whole town knows about it, my maids will hear it sooner or later.